chickens, in this video, we're going to be talking about the number of solutions questions on the SAT's math section. There are two distinct approaches that you should be taking with linear questions and with quadratic questions. And I wanted to help you make this distinction in this video. My name is Kathy Severson. I'm the inventor of the Severson Method. It's the scientifically proven way to learn anything fast, especially when it comes to SAT math questions. I also run a wonderful, amazing membership website where you can get direct help from me. There's a lot of pre-recorded content, walkthroughs, lessons, tutorials. There's also a lot of live content. I teach three times a week, live classes in Zoom, in the membership, where you can get direct help from me on any SAT verbal topics you desire. We also give you a dedicated mentor who will learn about you, learn about your challenges, and help you navigate the content. He will suggest specific lectures to watch, exercises to complete, and um, we will not leave you alone unless you would prefer it this way. Some students just want to do it at their own pace, so then we will just leave you alone and let you marinate in the sauce of the SAT content by yourself. Let's talk about number of solutions, shall we? When it comes to SAT math, I am not afraid to be overly prescriptive with my students. So I assign them a specific series of steps to follow when they see certain questions. And this one with the number of solutions is one of them. So here is my process. So when I see the word solution or solutions on the SAT math, I ask myself, is the equation linear or is the equation quadratic? Because if the equation is linear, I'm going to have a very specific sequence of steps. When I have two linear equations, what are the possibilities for two linear equations? Two linear equations, let's just draw a little graph, they can intersect. At the most, they can intersect once. So when two linear equations have different slope, there is going to be one solution. When two linear equations have the same slope, but different y-intercept, this is going to be no solution. And when two lines have the same slope and the same y-intercept, they're going to be kind of on top of each other, same slope, same y-intercept. This is going to yield or provide infinitely many solutions. This area is for linear equations only. That's what happens when you're asked about the number of solutions and it has to do with linear equations. Now, come over here. What if you're given a quadratic equation? With quadratic equation, you're not going to be using this. You're going to be using something called the discriminant. Discriminant is a part of your quadratic formula, and it's b squared minus 4ac. You can get your b, you can get your a, or your c from your standard form of a quadratic. It looks like this. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. You're going to get your b, your c, and your a from your standard form. You're going to calculate your discriminant. If your discriminant is equal to zero, you are going to have one solution. If your discriminant is any positive number, you're going to have two solutions. If your discriminant is any negative number, 
you're gonna have no real solutions. And this is for quadratic equations. Last thing, I promise. If you have a system of equations where one is a quadratic and another one is a linear, which, which steps are you going to take? And you're asked about solutions. You are going to combine the two equations and then you're going to follow the discriminant. So if you're dealing with a quadratic and a linear, you're going to use the discriminant. But if you have two linear equations, you're going to be using this system. Different slope, one solution. Same slope, different y-intercept, no solution. Same slope, same y-intercept, infinitely many solutions. Teacher, excuse me, how do we know that we're looking at a linear equation or a quadratic equation? This is such a good question. In order to know what linear equations look like, I actually have a whole long video for you. I'll link it up right here. But in general, the greatest exponent in a linear equation is going to be one. So there are going to be no squares, no cubes. The greatest exponent is going to be one. The classical equation of a line is y equals mx plus b, but it's not necessarily going to look like that on your test. If you're, if you're seeing an equation, that when you FOIL everything, there are no exponents. This is going to be a regular linear equation. And when you have an exponent that equals to two, you are dealing with a quadratic. I hope this helps. So let's take a look at question 35. What do we see here? Do we see a linear equation or do we see a quadratic? I hope you are saying that here we see a linear equation. In the equation above, a and b are constants. That means that they're just numbers. If the equation has infinitely many solutions, so we're over here, same slope and same y-intercept. Infinitely many solutions, what's the value of b? On the surface, it may look like here we only have one equation. We actually have two. One line that's on the left and another line that's on the right. Let's take a look at the line on the right because we know a lot about that line. What's the slope in that line? Four. What's the y-intercept? 10. Can you now find your, uh, your a and your b? Your a is four. Don't forget to expand. So it's going to be ax plus ab. And then ax is going to equal to four x. So a is going to equal to four. AB is going to equal to 10, or 4B is going to equal to 10. What is B equal to? B equals to two and a half. Pause the video, look at the solution, see if it helps. Let's try another one. What are we looking at here? Linear or quadratic? I hope you said linear. The greatest exponent here is one. Although these two linear equations are not in their form of being presentable, they're not in y equals mx plus b, but you can turn them in y equals mx plus b if you wanted to. Pause this video, try to solve it. Here, we know that the system has no solution. What does that mean, no solution? That means these two linear equations have the same slope, yet they have a different y-intercept. What is the slope for the first equation? When you bring your 3x to the other side, your slope is going to equal to 3. What should be the slope of the second equation? It should also equal to 3. But when you rearrange the second equation, it looks like the slope is going to be negative a over 2. Now we have a simplest equation to solve. Negative a over 2 is equal to 3. Your negative a is equal to 6, a is equal to negative 6. The right answer is a. One more example, shall we? Question 29, one of the hardest questions on the calculator section. What do we see here? Here we have a system of a quadratic and a linear equation. How should we approach this question? Should we approach this as a linear or should we approach this as a quadratic? I hope you're screaming, approach this as a quadratic. 
Step number one, you're going to blend these two equations together. You see they have y in common, so we're going to rewrite this as 3 equals ax squared plus b. Now, if we know that there are two real solutions, what should your discriminant equal to? Your discriminant should be equal any positive number. Now, run the quick test through your a and b through your answer choices and tell me which one of the answer choices gives you a positive discriminant. I hope you're saying that the positive discriminant comes from the answer choice B. I hope this video really helped you guys structure your knowledge about the number of solutions. First, ask yourself, is this a linear or is it a quadratic? If it's quadratic, do the discriminant work. And uh, if you are in the membership, just reach out to your mentor and we will give you a ton of IXL practice problems on using the discriminant and slides that test this exact concept. If you're not in the membership, join the membership. And if you want to win a membership for free for a month, please make sure you leave a comment below this video. Give this video a thumbs up and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.